I haven't watched a movie in a week. I think it was worth it. I think, I'm not totally sure yet. Like many people growing up, I was an avid reader and then I got to high school and college and just didn't have time to anymore. You know, your friends live around the corner, there's always stuff to do on campus, you already have to read for classes, and you kind of give up on the idea of reading for fun. And like many people do when I graduated college, I was like, oh my gosh, I actually have time to read again. I also graduated in the spring of 2020, right into a pandemic, and so I tried to start up reading again. Most of the pandemic, I definitely spent more of my time watching shows and watching movies, which is great. I definitely believe that movies can be just as important as books and hate that some people feel guilty doing that um, rather than reading. But it was definitely something that I missed and I also have not a newfound love, but uh, quite the obsession right now with buying books. The most minorly inconvenient thing happens to me. I stub my toe and I'm like, well, guess I gotta go buy a book now to make myself feel better. And while there are worse coping mechanisms in the world, it definitely hurts my wallet, especially when I don't read them. My life has been changing a little bit recently. I'm finally settled into a job that I got a few months ago and I just have more time on my hands. So I decided now is the time to try to catch up on some reading. And so my goal was to read seven books in the last seven days and I succeeded. The first book I read was My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Atessa Moshvig. I first picked this book up quite simply because I love the cover, I love the font, I love the title. I am the most judgmental person that I ever am when I'm in a bookstore and this just checked all of the boxes for me. The book is about a young woman who from an outsider's perspective kind of has it all. She lives in a beautiful apartment in New York City. Um, she has a great friend. She graduated from Columbia. She worked at a really nice art dealership but to put it quite simply, she's depressed and she doesn't know what to do anymore. She kind of lets her life crumble and fall apart under the idea that she's gonna take a year to herself. For a year, she sleeps as much as she wants to. She becomes completely self-absorbed and she goes to a therapist that prescribes her a lot of different medications. My Year of Rest and Relaxation has a 3.74 average star rating on Goodreads. I gave it a four out of five stars and I would recommend it to anyone who's interested in it. I would definitely read the trigger warnings beforehand. I will warn you that it is stream of consciousness narration, which is usually pretty hit or miss for me. And I think it is for everyone. Um, I have a best friend who, who didn't really enjoy the book, but I think I just enjoyed a Tessa's brand of stream of consciousness narration. So I can't promise everyone will love it. Um, our main character is very crude and she just says things like it is and becomes pretty self-absorbed throughout the book. But I think the way that she talks about uh, depression and the different things she's struggling with is very honest and real and it was nice to read something so open and crude in that way. I also wanted to read a quote from the book. I um, am pretty much guaranteed to like a book or movie 10 times more if it's quotable. I love being able to pull things out and hold on to them for later. And um, I loved this one. And then another short one. As soon as I finished my year of rest and relaxation, I started Slow Days Fast Company, The World, The Flesh, and LA by Eve Babbitts. <sighs> Within the first page or paragraph of this book, I texted my best friend and said, oh my God, I am 
in love. This is unreal. I'd always seen her books and thought that I needed to read one at some point. Of course, I loved that they always had to do with LA. She was also a writer in the 60s and 70s. And I don't know, just something about the book, uh, seeing them on the shelves, I was always just like, ah, I need to read those at some point. Slow Days Fast Company is basically almost a journal of her life in LA throughout uh, a couple of different memories. It reads like fiction, although it is very clearly nonfiction. My absolute favorite part is she just speaks so romantically. Not necessarily an optimist of LA and Hollywood and rock and roll at the time, but you can tell that she was a hopeless romantic the way that she spoke about the relationships in her life the way she spoke about the rain in LA and getting to go somewhere new. And I am absolutely in love with this woman. I won't pretend for a second that I am anywhere near as cool or interesting as she is, but I, I get her. I get her a lot. She also, talking about quotable books, I marked up my book so much. I love annotating. Um, but oh my, like every single line, I felt like I needed to write it down somewhere. I will reread this over and over. I've already ordered two more of her books and I can't be reincarnated because she just died not too long ago, but something, we are something. I don't know. This book has a 4.16 average star rating on Goodreads and you probably guessed I gave it a five out of five. So I would definitely recommend if you're a fan of Joan Didion or if you love um, Daisy Jones and the Six or uh, Almost Famous. If you love romantic language, um, if you love stuff like Fitzgerald, that is how she writes. If you love big cities and rock and roll and the 70s, read it. If you wanna laugh, read it. I had no idea I was going to laugh so hard reading this book. The third book I read was Morningside Heights by Joshua Hankin. Much like my year of rest and relaxation, I picked up, well, my best friend picked up Morningside Heights because she said it just looks like a Kelsey book. And then we flipped it over to read the description and I knew I had to buy it. Morningside Heights is about a graduate student in New York in the 70s, sensing a theme here, who falls in love with her Shakespeare professor. Their love story really only takes up the first few chapters and the rest of the book is about their life together as they're older and as Spence starts to develop early onset Alzheimer's. It's a beautiful story, it's incredibly sad, it's romantic, it's funny at times, and it is not short of complex, interesting characters. It has a 3.73 average star rating on Goodreads and I gave it a four out of five stars. The quote I'll read from this one is, she wasn't cut out for love, at least not for the romantic sort she was better suited for a frustrated love. So my first three picks were great. They were all four and five stars. Then I started to hit a slump in the second half of the week. On day four, I finished reading Mona by Honor and the Leak Sarak. 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 Sarak. Alo Sarak. Honor and the Leak Sarak. Honor and the Leak Sarak. Pola. Alo Zorak. I'm very sorry. Mona is about a proven writer that lives in LA and decides that she's going to go to a writer's conference to which she was invited because she uh, might win a writing award. This is again a stream of consciousness narration. She talks a lot about different cultures and mindsets and how they all come together at this writing conference. She also talks a lot about just being a young woman and relationships and sex. She talks about writing, she talks about reading. All in all, it wasn't a bad book by any means. I think that I'm just very, very specific about the stream of consciousness narration style and it just didn't work for me. But if it sounds interesting to you, I highly recommend looking it up and reading about it a little more and checking it out because I think the writer is extremely talented and has some really great ideas within it. It's also pretty short. It has a 3.46 average star rating 
on Goodreads and I unfortunately gave it a two out of five. Definitely look up trigger warnings for this book if you're thinking about reading it. The quote I have for you from this one is what's left of you if you don't write about it. On day five. On day five, I read Prater Violet by Christopher Isherwood. I won't lie, I was very disappointed by this book, mostly because I had really high expectations for it. First of all, it's beautiful. Like, this is the kind of book that I'm immediately gonna pick up and read the back of at a bookstore. I had never read Christopher Isherwood before, and I had always been meaning to, and Prater Violet is specifically about his time on the set of a movie. So I thought, why not, right? I'm gonna love this. Unfortunately, I just felt like it was missing something. It was like close. It was something that I was like almost interested in, but I felt myself just tearing through the pages, not in a good way, just because I wanted to get it done. I feel like this is definitely one that I need to do a little research on and maybe when I come to know the details around the book, I'll enjoy it more. This is again, like Eve Babbitt's book, a fictionalized nonfiction book. It's super short. The pages are even like halfway filled up. It has a 3.77 average star rating on Goodreads and I gave it a two out of five. I am planning on reading A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood. I haven't given up on him yet but I was pretty sad about this one. The quote I'll give you from this one is, I tried to take refuge in my pride. On day six, I read The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. It's been on my list for a long time. I've seen it on a lot of book recommendation lists and I've had people personally suggest it to me. It was super interesting. I totally understand why people love it and go back to it. It reads like a parable. It's very obvious what the author wanted you to get from his book, which I appreciate. I think in the end, it just generally didn't fall into the genre of books that I usually like. I'm not a big um, adventure reader. I'm not a big like the parable and myths and fables kind of person and I appreciate it but I just didn't enjoy it very much. It has a 3.9 average star rating on Goodreads and I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars again. But if you're interested in any of those genres I would highly recommend looking into it more because for a lot of people this is a very very important book to them and it reads quickly and I mean I feel like there's something to get out of it even if you don't necessarily enjoy the writing style either. And last but not least, on day seven, I read Funny You Should Ask by Alyssa Sussman. Again, I picked up this book because of this beautiful cover, the funny title, and I have seen it recently on quite a few book talk lists. Funny You Should Ask is about a young woman, a journalist who gets to interview her biggest celebrity crush. Much to her confusion, he really takes to her and starts inviting her to more and more things, and they spend uh, a weekend of getting to know each other, and it eventually leads to her writing this amazing article about him that everyone loves. Ten years later, her career has skyrocketed because of the article she wrote. She has a few books out, and they haven't spoken, but her management or agent or something asks if they could recreate that same interview for his new movie coming up. She's been haunted for 10 years by uh, this interview because people always, always ask her like what really happened between them, if they fell in love, if they had sex, and she feels like she maybe didn't earn her career and maybe it was just all because of him. So she has a lot of mixed feelings going into this interview, but she agrees to do it. And the book follows both before 10 years ago when they first did the first interview and now when they're doing the new interview. It has a 3.9 average star rating on Goodreads and I gave it a 4 out of 5. It's easy to read, it's fun, I think everybody could relate to it if you're into any celebrities or musicians or actors or whatever. It was a fun way to end the week. So those are the seven books that I read in seven days. It was fun, I'm proud of myself for doing it, and I'm planning on continuing it. I read another book today, and I always, always, always have a stack of books to read. But I also uh, miss watching movies, so I'm gonna go do that.
Bye.